the attacks of the devil and the dialogue that he had with, Adam, with Allah Azza wa Jal against the children of Adam alayhi salam. I want to remind myself that the, you know, in the last couple of years as I, I start reviewing the Qur'an again, I've decided to stop at places that I normally don't pay as much attention to. And this is one of those places. You pass by it and you, you read that the devil will attack from all sides and you just keep moving on and you just kind of don't stop and think about that. And so I've decided to pay attention to places in the Qur'an that easily, at least for myself, get overlooked. And to try to highlight that for my own benefit and inshallah ta'ala for your benefit as well. I think it's important to note that this is uh, the ultimate battle and the ultimate conflict that humanity will engage in since its birth all the way to the last day. Our ultimate enemy is shaitan. And there's no greater enemy that we have. And every other enemy that we have is only an agent of the shaitan. Is only furthered or fueled by a shaitan. And in these few ayat, this, this relentless, permanent enemy of ours laid out his entire strategy. What is he going to do with us? How is he going to do it? You know, how is he going to come at us? Every single one of us. Until the end of time. And that's a pretty big deal. Now we know the game plan of the enemy. And Allah recorded it in the Qur'an. So it's not a small thing to just pass by. It's important to understand how is it that the devil is going to come at us in our lives, at any moment of our lives, and try to pull us into his way. Right? So, which, which was my motivation for covering this in some depth. We've come to the last phrase of this ayah. The promise was that he will attack, he said, ثُمَّ لَآتِيَنَّهُمْ I swear to it, I will absolutely come at them, I'll attack them from right in front of them, from behind them, from their right and from their left, and I've given khutbahs on each of those now. And this is the final comment that he makes. And that comment is, وَلَا تَجِدُ أَكْثَرَهُمْ شَاكِرِينَ uh, you will find, you will not find most of them grateful. You will not find most of them grateful. Now, this is an important phrase and we have to see the guidance Allah Azza wa has embedded and infused inside of this phrase and that's what this khutbah is dedicated to. Where I want to start first and foremost is the origin of the word. I translated shakirin as grateful. It comes from the word shukr, which can easily be translated as gratitude. But originally in the Arabic language, a shukur or a shakur min ad dawaib, and some, some animals were called shakur. What kind of animal was called shakur? The kind of animal that eats a little bit and gets fat really quickly. Like it has a little bit of grass and it fills up. Similarly, shakra was used uh, for, you know, the udder of a cow that immediately fills up with milk. So it gives more milk than expected. And the, the idea behind the origin of the word shukr is actually something small, with a little bit of good, and that good swells and enhances to the point where it starts coming out. It pours out. And from it, the Arabs developed a notion of gratitude, meaning shukr, partic- and there are other words for uh, you know, gratitude in Arabic, but this particular word highlights when you're grateful over something that may seemingly be small, but its effects are many. So you don't dismiss something that's done for you, and you're actually appreciative of what's done for you, or the good that you have, in not just one way, in many ways. And it multiplies inside you. Not only does it multiply inside you, you would think gratitude is a feeling. But it's more than a feeling, because according to you know, Hassan Hassan Jabal in his, in his um, commentary on the origin of the word, he says, وَشُكْرُ يَزِيدُ عَنِ الْرِضَى Not just being happy with what you have. Not just being content with what we have. It's more than that. Now what's more than that? فِي مَعْنَ الظُّهُورِ Meaning, just like the milk pours out, or just like the, the, the sheep shows that it's grown more, the same way when, you're, when you have shukr in you, not only do you appreciate something, it actually results in you doing something. It comes out, your mood has changed, your behavior has changed, you've even verbalized how grateful you are, you've actually said thank you. A lot of times you have family members and your, your, your uh, father says to you, you know, you never thank me for anything, you don't appreciate anything you do, I do. And you say, yeah I do, I appreciate what you do, yeah but you never said it. I have shukr, no shukr doesn't mean you have it in your head. It has to come out, it has to be said and stated and displayed. One of the names of Allah is actually Shakir. One of the names of Allah, why? He appreciates what little his slaves do and he does so much for them. So shukr is not just a feeling, it's actually behavior also that comes from that feeling. It's not just a, a sentiment and an emotion that leaves, stays buried inside, it manifests itself. So that's the first thing I wanted to get out of the way in this khutbah, is just some of the origins of the meaning of the word gratitude and appreciation, and how it's supposed to be something that overwhelms a person. It's a very powerful thought that grows and grows and grows and swells inside of you. Now, the devil's promise is, you will find most of you will not find most of them with gratitude. They're not going to have shukr. 
human beings. You know, what I want you, the first thing I want you to think about in, in terms of this conversation is Allah told Shaitan, فَمَا يَكُونُ لَكَ أَن تَتَكَبَّرَ فِيهَا When the devil refused to do sajda, when Shaitan refused to do sajda, Allah told him, you have no right, you, it's not right for you to be arrogant here. <coughs> the problem of the devil was arrogance. And that's the reason he got kicked out. فَخْرُجْ you know, إِنَّكَ مِنَ الصَّاغِرِينَ Get out of here. He was expelled because he was arrogant. Now, because he's angry at humanity, you expect that he would turn back to Allah and say, well, you kicked me out of here because I'm arrogant. I'm going to prove to you that they're arrogant. So they don't deserve this place either. But instead of telling Allah, oh, you think I'm arrogant? Let me show you how arrogant they are. He said, you think I'm arrogant? Once I'm done attacking them, I will prove to you not that they're arrogant, but they're not grateful. So it's a switch. The switch is, the, if the complaint against the devil is that he's arrogant, then he should prove that I'm not that different from these guys. Look, they're arrogant too. But no, he says, I will prove that they are ungrateful. What, what Qur'an has done so strategically and so wisely here, is that's actually shown us something. The opposite of arrogance, we think the opposite of arrogance is humility in the dictionary. The opposite of arrogance is what? Humility. But in the Qur'an, the opposite of arrogance is gratitude. So Allah has taught us a new opposite, you see. And so what we're learning now is, there's, it is impossible for a human being to be arrogant if they are grateful. And if they are grateful, there's no way arrogance will hurt them. And the fact that arrogance occurs, that can only be a manifestation of a lack of shukr. If shukr was there, there's no way that would have happened. So that's the first important thing. If, when someone says, hey, at least I'm not arrogant, well... From the Qur'an's definition, don't just think about arrogance as someone who thinks very highly of themselves, or is full of themselves, or is mean towards others. You, you and I have to check ourselves, how grateful are we? Because if gratitude is missing, then arrogance is there. Because th these are opposites in the Qur'an now. These, are, these, are put, these have been placed against one another. The, the next thing that's important here, I kept telling you shaitan comes from four directions. And now we're learning, if his attack is successful, what's the goal? The goal is not for human beings to make a mistake. That's not his goal, that's not enough. Because Allah created the human beings programmed to make mistakes. كُلُّ بَنِي آدَمْ خطاون. All children of Adam keep on making mistakes. That's what we do. Human beings are not made perfect. We're not angels, we have choice. We have, we have shortcomings. As a matter of fact, I kept telling you, even when we do good deeds, they have shortcomings. Even when we make salah, it's not perfect. Even when we recite Qur'an, it's not perfect. Even when we do hajj, it's not perfect. When we fast, it's not perfect. So we're imperfect by definition. So the fact that we have mistakes is no surprise. The devil's mission is not to get us to make a mistake. The devil's mission is clear in this ayah. Once I attack them from these directions, I will prove to you that they are not grateful. If he can get gratitude out of us as a result of our mistakes, then he's successful. That's actually his goal, to remove the sense of appreciation of Allah and to do things out of the appreciation and the shukr to Allah, our optimistic you know, feeling towards Allah. You know, if, if you, you think about our relationship with Allah, for so many people their relationship with Allah is based on fear. If you don't pray, Allah is going to burn you. If you don't do this, Allah is going to punish you. Your, your, your first impulse of your relationship with the one who made you is that you should be afraid of Him. And though fear is a part of my relationship with Him, the, the most powerful force inside me that should make me do something for Allah, like pray, like eat halal, like do the right thing, like stay away from evil deeds, is actually gratitude. Allah has done so much for me, the least I can do is these few things. If He can get rid of that feeling, shukr, if He can get rid of shukr, then even if I'm obeying Allah, my heart is missing something. It's not going to have what it really, really needs to be able to, to carry on. It is out of a sense of gratitude that we are in obedience to Allah. Which is why Fatiha, that calls us to Allah's worship, Iyaka na'budu, begins with gratitude. Alhamdulillah is where it begins. And then we get to worship. Because that sense of appreciation of Allah is what drives us more than anything else. But really what I wanted to spend the majority of this khutbah on is these attacks again, and how each of them, we can be protected from those attacks if we are grateful. Now let me phrase that another way. He said to Allah, I will attack them from four sides, and I'll prove to you that they're not grateful. In other words, if they were grateful, these attacks wouldn't have worked. If they're actually grateful, then the attacks will fail. 
If they have shukr, they are not going to they're not going to succeed. So though I've given you long explanations of each of those directions, I'm going to walk you through each of them again briefly and describe to you in brief in simple terms how if we can remember to be grateful to Allah, we can actually protect ourselves from the from the waswas of shaitan. When when he comes from the front, he attacks me you and me from the front, he tempts us from what we can have. You see something in front of you, you're tempted by it, the greed and what, what, what comes from the front is also your future. You start thinking about your future or worried about your future. Is this gonna happen or is that gonna happen? And sometimes you start making bad decisions, decisions that Allah won't be happy with because you're concerned about your future. If you and I have shukr inside us, deep gratitude of Allah inside us, then we know that if you look back in your past, how many times has Allah provided for you? How many times have you been and I've been in a problem and Allah has taken care of us all this time? Why do you think that all of a sudden, now Allah will not take care of you. In other words, whatever temptation comes to you from the front, if you and I can learn to be grateful for what we have, and not go towards something more than what we need, not let our greed get in the way, not let our reliance of Allah go away, but be grateful He's taken care of me this far, why would He leave me now? This is the same thing Allah said to His Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, مَا وَدَّعَكَ رَبُّكَ وَمَا قَلَى Allah didn't abandon you, just because you're going through a hard time and you see something in front of you that you might just grab onto and take it because you're desperate, no. You know, you were in desperate need, he provided you before, he reminds him. Your past should remind you how grateful we should be even in times of crisis, which is why, this is the, this is the key here, if you're tempted by something that comes in front of you, then actually, be grateful to Allah by talking about the favor Allah has done for you. This is what Yusuf did. Yusuf was tempted by that minister's wife. She, she tried to seduce him. What was his immediate response? My master has been really good to me. He is, you know, first he sought Allah's protection and immediately he said, Allah has been good to me, meaning he was shakir, he was grateful, immediately. And that protected him. If you can, you know, you can acknowledge the favor of Allah on you, then the attacks that come from the front, you'll be able to stay away from them. The attacks from behind are scarier though. The attacks from behind are some, like, like I described to you before, sometimes people were living in a life of sin. They were doing things they weren't supposed to do. And Allah pulled them out. Maybe it happened last Ramadan, maybe it happened last Jum'ah, maybe it happened two hours ago, I don't know. But Allah pulled you out of sin. And you feel the, the burden lift from inside you. That's a feeling only you know, nobody else, you can't even describe it to anybody else. You can feel the tears rolling down your eyes because Allah has pulled you into light again. And He's pulled, removed darkness from you. And the evil that you felt that was weighing on you has been taken away from you. Now you're in a sense of relief that Allah has actually given you this gift that he's able to get you away from a life of evil, from a sin. Now that you have that for a while, the devil comes back and says, hey, wanna go back? He tries to pull you back again. And when he's about to pull you back, at that moment you and I have to remember the moment we felt gratitude that Allah pulled us out. How grateful were we when Allah pulled us out the first time? A person has to forget that. They have to forget the moment they made tawbah. They have to forget when they felt that closeness to Allah or the relief that Allah gave them. They have to let go of that for the devil to be successful in pulling them back again, in tempting them again. But it is in those moments when he tries to pull you and attack you from behind that you and I have to remind ourselves of how Allah has given us the gift of guidance, how Allah has given us the gift of tawbah, the gift of repentance, so that whenever that same temptation, that same attack, because the devil knows, it worked last time, let me try it again, it'll probably work again on this guy. I tried the last 10 times it worked, the 11th time it should work too. But if you've made tawbah and you've tasted its sweetness, that's what you should be grateful for. And that's what you have to remind yourself of. And if you can remind yourself of that, that attack won't work. If you can, re and, and speak of it, Actually, if not to anybody else, speak to yourself of it. Ya Allah, you pulled me out of this. I will not let myself fall again. I am grateful for how you pulled me out of this mess. Look at all the evil that came in my life as a result of my mistake. Ya Allah, I'm not going to fall into that again. When you just even have that conversation with Allah, like I said, shukr isn't just a feeling. It has to manifest. And if that's the exercise you have to do, even talk to yourself, do it. Do it. Just don't, don't do it in front of people. They'll think you're weird. If you're in your car by yourself, just talk to Allah. And acknowledge to Him that you are not going to be pulled back again by the call of, of, of shaitan. When the devil attacks from the right, that's one of the scariest. 
When he attacks from the right, he attacks from self-righteousness. It's, you know, the, the attack from the right is when you think you're better than someone else, or you're doing good deeds more than someone else, or you're focused on the bad deeds of someone else, and you, you know, in your mind, you're there to correct everybody else. You're there to fix everybody else. So your focus is never you. Your focus is always somebody else. When people think like that, you know what happens? In their mind, they own their own good deeds. If I've done hajj, that's a huge accomplishment I accomplished. If I gave a khutbah, it's an accomplishment I have. If I memorize the Qur'an, it's an accomplishment I have. It's not. Any good deed you and I have done are gifts Allah has given us. We didn't earn them. That was a gift Allah gave us. Guidance itself is not something I earned. Not something I own, not something I take credit for. As a matter of fact, I will never own it, I will always beg Allah for it. This is why the more good deeds we do, the more humble we should become. Allah gave me another chance to serve Him, another chance to serve Him, another chance to serve Him. That's supposed to, the good deeds are not supposed to make us feel like we're better, it's actually makes, supposed to bury us under Allah's favor. Shaykh Suhaib, I was talking to him this afternoon about these ayat and he shared something so beautiful with me, I want to share it with you and I hope I don't butcher it. Uh, he said, you know, when someone acknowledges how much Allah has favored them, then they become more and more humble. And being humble is like being Lord, right? You're just buried under someone's favor. And we're buried under Allah's favor. And the distance between me and my Rabb is infinite. Like Allah is supremely high and I'm supremely low. And when you realize how low you are and how much buried under Allah's favor, the weight of Allah's favor on you is so much, then when you look at the person next to you, you'll never think how much higher you are than them. Because the distance between you and this other person, if you're an inch higher than them or two inches, is nothing compared to the infinite distance between you and Allah. This distance between us of better and worse becomes irrelevant. It becomes irrelevant. You're not even concerned about it. Because you're so overwhelmed by the, the, the overwhelming favor of Allah on you. This is what the, the right does. The, you know, good deeds that we do are supposed to make us more humble. People come to you when you do a good deed. And they'll praise you. And that'll let, start getting to your head. Yeah, yeah, I am pretty amazing. I am Allah's gift to this community. No, you're not. You'll, you'll, you'll be gone. And the deen will go on. And Islam will go on. And the Qur'an will go on, and Allah will use other, better, more humble slaves for His service. We are not an asset to Allah. We are not, you know, we, we are honored to be able to serve Him. But we're not any better because we serve Him. As a matter of fact, you can't even think about that for yourself, as opposed to other, you know, even people that are not Muslim, that were better than them. No, they're also children of Adam alayhi salam. We weren't made, ukhrijat minan nas, the best nation made, the best nation of the people. No, let's say the best nation for the people, not of the people. We're not the, we're not better than everyone else, we're the, we're better for everyone else. It's a complete difference, you know. So this idea of, you know, when, when you do engage in good deeds, then the devil comes in a sneaky kind of way, giving you a sense of lofty, you know, uh, uh, self-importance. The way to be grateful to Allah. Every time you get a chance to do something good, thank Allah. Every time. And the, 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 the gratitude, this, this litmus test that I have for myself and I recommend for all of you. When you do something for somebody else, when you teach somebody somebody else, when you give sadaqah to somebody else, when you help somebody else, somebody needed to move from their apartment, you helped them move furniture, somebody needed to learn some Qur'an, you taught them Qur'an, you did whatever service for other people, and they don't appreciate you. They don't remember what you did for them. And it makes you upset. You know what that means? There's still some devil inside left. When you did someone something for someone, you didn't do it for them. You did it for Allah. Allah recorded it, you should be happy. You're grateful that Allah gave you a chance to help. That's it. There's nothing more from you. You have no more expectations. Not from people. You didn't do it for people. You did it for someone who's, who's recorded it and he knows and that's enough for me. I'm grateful that he recorded this good deed. If I said, oh man, I've got to prepare this khutbah. I hope people show up or I give this speech and two people show up. There's a hall of a thousand and two people show up. And I'm upset. Only two people came? What is this? The problem then is with me. Because I didn't, if, I, if I'm doing it for a crowd, if I'm doing it for recognition, then I'm no longer grateful to Allah. The fact that I got a chance to serve, the fact that I got a chance to share something, that Allah gave me that opportunity, I'm grateful for that. I can't let anything else get in my head. Everything else comes from shaitan. 
So wala tajidu aktharahum shakirin. And finally, from the left, which is obvious, the left is when he, when shaitan calls you to haram. The left is when shaitan calls you to things that are known evil. They are clearly disobedience to Allah. And when he's pulling you in that direction, the only thing that will protect you is when you become grateful for what is halal. When you become grateful for the fact that Allah did not, and shaitan will come to you and tell you, I don't know, this Islam thing is so hard, everything's haram. Everything's forbidden, man, it's so restrictive. There's so many rules, there's so many fences everywhere. Can't do this, can't do that, can't do this, can't have any fun in life. That's the devil talking to you. And let me tell you, Allah Azza wa Jal in the same surah said, وَجَعَلْنَا لَكُمْ فِيهَا مَعَايِشْ قَلِيلًا مَا تَشْكُرُونَ Allah said, in this world, He put things for you to enjoy. How little you're grateful. Just like in Jannah, everything was halal except one tree. In this world, all kinds of good things are halal except a few things that are filthy. Allah said, stay away from them. But the devil tries to come and tell you, no, Islam says everything is haram, and the, you know you can't live your life if you follow Islam. No, 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 no. That's a lie from the devil, making you ungrateful for the halal. So what that does is, the, the devil's job here is to make halal look ugly, and the haram look beautiful. That's his job. His job is to make, I'll say that again, halal look ugly, and the haram look beautiful. So what's he going to do? He's going to say, man, you got to drive all the way there to eat the halal food. This is a restaurant right here, just go here. You know, in your head, you're like, halal is too hard, too far away. Then you, some, some young man is thinking about marriage, and his family comes and says, well, you know, you got to have, the, the, the girl's family says, you have to have this much money, you have to have a house, you have to have this, you have to have that, then we have to invite our cousins from Pakistan, and from Afghanistan, and from all the Istans that are there, and we have to have like, you know, this many dishes and that, and he's like, oh, this halal is really hard. I could just, you know, go on social media and find myself somebody to hang out with. So much easier, free too. You know, no pressure, no, nobody needs to know. The door, shaitan's job is to make the, the, the gateway to haram easy, and the doors to halal difficult. Don't become an instrument of shaitan by making the halal difficult. Don't become that. Don't make the halal difficult for yourself. Don't make the halal difficult for your family. Because if that happens, he's easily able to pull people to the left. I know many young men, I know many young women that regret that they're in haram relationships. They regret that. Why are they in that? Because their family doesn't want to get them married. Not old enough yet. Old enough to do haram. Old enough to follow shaitan. Old enough to do all kinds of sins and ruin your akhirah, but not old enough to get married. This, or, or not wealthy enough to get married. Or your other, your other sisters haven't gotten married yet, this is why we can't marry you off. Who came up with these rules? These, these, this is when the door to halal is closed, and the door to haram is opened. And we can't do that to ourselves. Because then we're just following into his footsteps. This is what it means when, when Allah Azza wa Jal let us know that the devil wants to prove that we will not be grateful. We should be grateful for the doors Allah has opened for us with the halal. We should be grateful that Allah has guided us away from things that are harmful for us. Anything that Allah made haram has to be harmful for us. That's the only reason it's haram. يُحَرِّمُ عَلَيْهِمُ الْخَبَائِثِ He only made haram for you things that are filthy, that are actually hurtful for you. Just like you wouldn't eat filth, just like you wouldn't consume filth, just like you wouldn't bathe in filth. You can't engage in filth and not get sick, not get dirty, you know. Not get contaminated. That's the purpose of it. And we have to be grateful for that guidance that Allah Azza wa has given us. I pray that Allah Azza wa sincerely makes all of us grateful human beings. And that Allah Azza wa strengthen the bond that we have with Him and with His Word and give us the strength through His Word to be able to fight all kinds of whispers of the devil. Barakallahu li wa lakum fil Qur'an al-Hakim wa nafa'ani wa iyaakum bil ayati wa dhikr al-Hakim. Allah